A World of Chess, Its Development and Variations Through Centuries and Civilizations by Jean-Louis Cazot and Rick Knowlton. The familiar game of chess is just one variety of a fascinatingly diverse family of games. Many have cropped up over the past 15 centuries, and several chess variants are still very popular and played at high levels. In 400 pages with over 400 black and white illustrations, this book includes the most up-to-date historic findings along with clear and accurate instruction on how the games are actually played. The book is in seven parts, examining the Middle East, India through Southeast Asia, China, Japan, Europe, further chess inventions, and finally, the origin of chess itself. So beyond the familiar king, queen, bishop, knight, rook, and pawn, and their Persian Arabic forerunners, many other warriors, characters, animals, weapons, as well as Chinese and Japanese figures appear in this book's diverse chessboard diagrams and game instructions. The first section opens with the direct antecedent of our modern Western chess. The ancient game of Shatranj, as it was played and chronicled in the Arab world for about a thousand years. Ancient manuscripts describe where the game was propagated, and a very clear rulebook-like section shows exactly how the ancient game was played. The classic Arab texts provide a wealth of studies and puzzles, and also show many chess variants, some expanded with added pieces, some in varying shapes and special configurations. Referring directly to the original source materials, the book translates these games with clear rules and diagrams for the modern player. Chessmen are depicted from the most abstract, lathe-turned forms to the most elaborate figurative carvings as shown in the Mongolian tradition, which is also described in detail along with its cultural variations. Part 2 looks at the complex course chess took as it traveled south into the Indian subcontinent and on into Southeast Asia. Thailand and Cambodia still maintain a unique chess culture with elaborate ceremonial matches and widespread popularity. After opening with the earliest known Indian game, Chaturanga, the book discusses the diversity of Indian chess found in more recent times. The famous and often misunderstood game of Chaturaji is then explained in historic context. This selection then opens in full with a slew of expanded Indian variants, some with simple new ideas in the moves of pieces, and some with strikingly complicated and novel piece moves, deviating far from any other known game. This line of chess heritage continues into Southeast Asia, depicted on the walls of Angkor Wat Chess maintains an enduring legacy through Cambodia and Thailand. The game of Myanmar, with its forward pawns, finely carved pieces, and open starting arrangement, also falls into this lineage. Another so-called Cambodian chess is introduced to have some misconceptions untangled. And we also get some information on recent chess developments in the region. Everything is illustrated, analyzed, and referenced to the original source documents. The next section looks at chess in the great sphere of Chinese culture. The game Xianqi is said to be played by more people than any other board game in the world, even more than the standard international chess. There are so many Chinese around the world and so many play this game. The book gives a friendly invitation to its readers to release any reservations they may have against learning a few Chinese ideograms and to try their hands at this logical and dynamic game. The context of Chinese cultural history is provided, along with further historic variants and reconstructions. Korea has its own chess, also very popular today. Derived from the same ancient sources as Chinese chess, the Korean rules are strikingly different. Probably never before presented in a Western publication, a huge ancient Korean variant is shown in terms of its original, sometimes ambiguous, 18th century rulebook. A whole family of so-called capture the flag games spontaneously appeared all over the world throughout the 20th century. 
After a broad exposition of the many games of animals, warriors, trains, planes, spies, and explosives, the book delves into how the many games could have sprung from an original chess variant concept. Included here is a close look at the curious origins of Stratego. Japan has a lineage of chess evolution all its own. Shogi is still very popular with highly regarded champions. Its unique pentagonal tile-shaped pieces are fully explained and once again, the reader is invited to take part in this unique facet of what chess can be. There are variants with special themes including birds and beasts. In shogi games, both sides set up their pieces exactly the same, so only one side's initial array is necessary in these large variant diagrams. Unique to this section are a series of charts that help players view the many novel moves of the pieces at a glance. The details of these moves and other rules are explained in the text. Small variants are also introduced, and the largest variants with hundreds of pieces are described and translated, though giving a full instruction of these would require books of their own. Dedicated students of the enormous variants are directed to further resources on the internet. The history of the many Japanese games is given, with reference to key manuscripts. Some are presented here in translation for the first time. Finally, the chess lineage familiar to most of us makes its appearance. When chess entered Europe, it became rich in myth and allegory. Many interesting variants on the chess theme were explored. Before the game familiar to us took hold, which is now seemingly played by everybody. The book explores evidence of the early arrival and dissemination of the old style game as it came into Europe from the Arab world and its incorporation into the pervading European culture. The many variants are instructed in detail with clear and updated charts. In the Middle Ages, chess took an interesting academic turn, becoming the basis for Rhythmomachi, a family of games using mathematical relationships to establish moves and captures. The famous game of courier chess is presented, once again inviting the reader to give it a try, and the book expounds upon many more games before breaking into the modern European chess. The rules of this well-known game are given, of course, with a historic investigation and analysis of exactly how this game, among the many great variants of the world, became so well established and widespread. No sooner is the reader brought home into the modern era than we are presented with part six, the further evolutions of chess. Our attention is drawn to the history of major themes, beginning with a centuries-old idea of combining the move of the knight with that of the bishop, rook, or queen. Many comparative charts throughout the text are used to put the games into chronological perspective. For instance, the knighted pieces concept shown from the 17th century through modern times. Changes in warfare and geometry play a part in the new chess ideas, and once again, the book explores and explains each of these developments. The making and remaking of games for three or four players has a surprisingly rich history of dedicated societies and tournaments, and some varieties are played together at the highest levels of modern players. Finally, chess possibilities are unleashed, taken into further dimensions and realms of pure fantasy. After this enormous world tour, part seven finally settles into the ultimate question. When, where, how, why, and by whom was chess first invented? This section begins with a broad review of many world myths of chess invention, finally giving over to the modern scientific study begun late in the 17th century. The book launches into an updated study of its own, compiling all the best research to date, considering the written and archeological record, the existing ancient game cultures, and finally, the philological concepts of one game evolving into another, finally summing up this investigation as the text reaches its conclusion. What a trek through chess and recreation. 
A timeline at the end helps put the many advents of chess history into chronological context. And the notes referred to throughout the text are a very important addition. 25 pages covering everything from incidental clarifications to extended translations from our original historic manuscripts. Five pages of bibliography will be invaluable to the dedicated researcher, and you've got to love a good index. This 10-minute video can barely touch on the seemingly endless legacy of chess presented in these informationally rich 400 pages with over 400 illustrations. Truly a monumental research, yet pleasant to read. This is a genuine invitation to enjoy chess in the broadest possible sense. Recommended to be purchased in the dedicated website, aworldofchess.com, also available on Amazon and by electronic copy at Google Books.